Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'm showing you how to make the best red velvet cake. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am sharing a highly requested recipe with you. Now, I have probably received over a thousand requests for this recipe, and that's just in the past six months. Today's red velvet cake recipe is one I put off making for a long, long time because I actually had a very bad experience with it when I was a kid. Now, because I got so many requests for this cake, I overcame that problem and I tested over a hundred different versions of this cake and settled on today's recipe. I think you are absolutely going to love it. I think it's the best red velvet cake recipe out there. So let's go ahead and get started by preheating our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, you're going to need a large mixing bowl and we're going to add two and a fourth cups of all purpose flour to this bowl. We'll also be adding one and three fourths cup of granulated sugar. And for my red velvet cake recipe, I also like to add three fourths cup of firmly packed light brown sugar. This adds a little extra depth of flavor, a little extra moisture to the cake. Now a good red velvet cake should have a subtle chocolate flavor to it. It's not really intense, but it should definitely taste a bit like chocolate cake. We're going to be adding three tablespoons of natural cocoa powder to today's batter. Some cake recipes use less cocoa powder, that way the red color comes through more vibrantly, but I really hate sacrificing flavor for color. And also those neon red cakes, they just kind of look fake. They look like they were made with Play-Doh, so stick with three tablespoons. We'll also be adding one and a half teaspoons of baking soda and one teaspoon of salt. Now whisk these ingredients together until they're well combined. When I was like 10 years old, my cousin had a red velvet cake at her birthday party that my aunt had made and it was delicious, but that was the day where my relationship with red velvet cake went completely downhill and it took me 20 years to come back from that. Now, once you have all of your ingredients whisked together, we're going to add one half cup of canola oil or you could use vegetable oil or any other neutral oil instead. We're also going to be adding one half cup of melted butter. And I love using this blend of oil and butter because it makes for the most moist, most flavorful cake possible. And if you know me, you know I'm gonna make sure every drop of butter goes into that batter. Now I like to combine the oil and butter with the dry ingredients here. The mixture is going to be a little bit thick, but you wanna stir everything together with your spatula. And as you can see, you do not need a stand mixer for this recipe. You could use one if you'd like, but using a spatula works just fine for me. So this mixture will be thick and crumbly at this point. That's totally fine. It's supposed to look this way. Next, we will be adding two large eggs plus an additional egg yolk, which is going to help make the cake a little bit more tender, a bit more rich. Now, I recommend these eggs be at room temperature before adding them. It just helps everything combine nicely. Before adding them to the batter, I like to lightly beat them together. We'll also be adding one tablespoon of vanilla extract and one teaspoon of white vinegar. Stir everything together until these ingredients are well combined. And you want this mixture to be smooth when you're finished combining the eggs. Now the next ingredient you need is one and a half cups of buttermilk and ideally this should also be at room temperature. Now buttermilk is a classic essential ingredient for red velvet cake that helps give it its signature flavor and its moisture. But if you don't have regular buttermilk on hand, I do have a very easy substitute that I've explained in the printable recipe below. Just go down to the notes section. Now before I add the buttermilk, I like to add my food coloring in with the milk and whisk it together. I find that this just makes it easier to color the batter evenly than if I were to just drop the food dye right into the batter. Now, I'm going to be using gel food coloring. I am using AmeriColor Super Red. You will need two teaspoons of gel food coloring or if you want to use liquid, you will need one ounce. Now I know there are some of you out there who want to tell me that red food coloring is not a part of traditional red velvet cake. Before you comment, please read my blog post where I talk a little bit about red food coloring. And yes, I have the heavy duty bottle because I tested a lot of red velvet cakes. You can get one much smaller than this. So we'll just whisk together the milk and the food coloring. And if it looks a little pink, that's fine. Now just gradually stir this milk food coloring mixture into the rest of your batter until everything is completely smooth and lump free. So even though I'm an advocate for red food coloring in this cake, it's that food coloring that actually put me on bad terms with red velvet cake so many years ago. It's actually my uncle's fault. He used to like to mess with me and he told me that if I ate a red cake, it would make me very sick. I don't know if he wanted my corner piece or not, but that's what he told me. And it kind of stuck with me. 
I like to use just a little bit at a time to eliminate the chance of any splatter happening. Now, if you opt to not use food coloring, you can still make this cake. It'll still taste good. The color will just be more of a light brown. And honestly, if you're going to leave out the food coloring, just make my chocolate cake instead. <laughs> I mean, that color is something else. Once your batter is nice and smooth and very red, you'll want to grab two eight inch baking pans. Now I do include notes for baking this in different size pans in the printable recipe below. Now I have greased both of these pans on the sides with a little bit of baking spray. And as always, I've lined the bottoms with parchment paper. This just about guarantees that they won't stick. I'll evenly divide the batter into these pans. A lot of times I like to use my scale to make sure I'm using the exact same amount of batter in each pan. Today we're just going to wing it. We'll take these over to our 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven where they're going to need to bake for about 40 to 45 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean or with a few moist crumbs. Let these cakes cool for about 10 to 15 minutes in their pan and then I like to run a knife along the inside of the pan just in case anything stuck and carefully invert each cake onto a cooling rack. Thanks to that parchment paper we have no problem with sticking. Now you'll want to make sure you let these cakes cool completely before you cover them with frosting. But once they're cooled, you can go ahead and place the first one onto your cake tray. Now red velvet cake is traditionally frosted with ermine icing and that's what I'm going to be using today. I just recently shared this video so I will be sure to drop the link in the printable recipe. But alternatively, you could use cream cheese frosting which also pairs really well with this cake. These cakes usually bake up nice and flat for me, but if yours have domed, you can certainly level them off with a sharp serrated knife once they've cooled. Now I told you guys how my uncle told me that if I ate this red cake, I would get sick. And of course I didn't believe him and I ate more cake and I ate more cake. And then I went home and I got really, really sick. Now you could write this off as maybe just being food poisoning or just being a fluke, but every time I ate red velvet cake after that, for years I would get sick to the point where I just didn't even touch it. Just looking at the cake could make me feel nauseous. Now because of that I was actually determined to not put a red velvet cake recipe on the blog, but because so many of you asked I spent a lot of time overcoming that aversion and over a hundred red velvet cakes later here we are. And I'm happy to say I don't get sick anymore. I got over whatever mental block was in my head. As with many of my cakes, I like to do a rough crumb coating first, then pop this cake in the fridge or freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then the rest of the icing will go on cleanly. Now all that's left to do is slice and serve. And that is how you make the best red velvet cake completely from scratch. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe, and if you did, make sure to check out my playlist on four cakes that every baker needs to have in their cookbook. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. That's a good cake.